know you've seen all the really cool cork boards on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. So today's video from Upstart Epoxy, we're gonna show you how to make your own cork board, whether it's a charcuterie board or a singles person serving board like this. Stay tuned. So we went ahead and we got our, uh, we have a small form here. We use these usually for ashtrays or cigar trays. But what we figured is we're gonna go ahead and make a single person small serving charcuterie board out of wood, olive wood, and you guessed it folks, wine corks. So the, the size that you create can be based on however you want it. We're just gonna show you how to do it. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna get some Upstart Epoxy's tabletop epoxy, and we're gonna pour about a quarter inch into the base of our form here. We don't want it too deep because we're gonna need to pour that layer, and then we're gonna have to come in back with a clear layer above that. So once we pour that thin layer of tabletop epoxy, we're gonna place our corks, let it all cure, and then we're gonna come back with another layer. Once it's all cured up, a see-through layer, a clear layer, folks. We're gonna give that depth perception so that the wine corks really stand out and it really looks like a cool piece of art. So we went ahead and we sealed all the edges, all the joints and the seams on our HDPE mold here. We got all the outside, the underside, and all of here with silicone, folks. Remember, you can use silicone, you can use caulk, you can use um, gasket seal, whatever you wanna use. I've just always had good luck with, with silicone and that's the way we like to go. So we've got our pieces of wood placed in here. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna get some, some uh, hot glue here. We got a little hot glue gun. We're gonna put a small little dab here, small little dab here, small little dab here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just place it right on the mold. We're gonna hold it down for about a good five seconds. Then we're gonna make sure it's stuck. Ugh. Try and pull it here and look, not even moving folks, so it's good. So let's go ahead and do that with the rest of these. And you don't gotta put much hot glue, just in the corners I find. That way it tacks down and it sticks to the surface. That's what we want. We want it to hold on to this HDPE. And it's not gonna be a problem with the hot glue. It's gonna, it's gonna come right off along with the epoxy and the whole thing once we pop this out of the mold. So the only thing is you gotta sand it off at the end and that's easy. Okay, let's put a little bit more just in case there. Let's go ahead and place this here in the corner. Push it down for a good five to seven seconds. Okay, no jiggling, no wiggling. We're good. Okay, let's go ahead and put that to the side. Now we're gonna go ahead and whip up a batch of upstart epoxies, tabletop epoxy. Like I said, we're not gonna need much, folks. About a quarter inch in here just to hold these down. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say eight ounces should be. But you know what, let's go to 12 just to be safe. So we're gonna go, we're gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio. And you know what, let's go, let's go up to three. So let's go, so we've got one-to-one -one ratio. So we'll do part A, three, and then we'll come back with part B to three. So let's go ahead and get that done. I always like to pour my, my hardener first because I find that it it's easier to mix up when you put the, uh... you know what, let's go two to two. Just looking at it, how much that came out with. That's gonna be more than enough that we need to cover that bottom. So we're gonna go two to two here, folks. Instead of three to three. You don't want to waste a bit of that look at that man that is called perfecto mundo boom so we've got it all mixed up then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna put like a wine color I always used to like to use a specific color it's kind of whiny it's got a wine color to it so One little, one little dab in there. We're not going to need too much. 
Well, maybe it won't. It never hurts. Okay. So we've got that all mixed up. Now we're going to go ahead and get a quick little mixing stick here. Let's just get this all mixed up and ready to pour. Now, a lot of people will argue that you need to um, go ahead and soak your wine corks in tabletop epoxy uh, just to seal them. And that may be true, but I've never had a problem without sealing my wine corks. And I've done probably 50 to 70 wine cork boards. And I've never had that problem where the air releases from the corks and is evident and shown in the clear pour. And uh, so I don't even bother with it. But if you feel like you need to seal it, by all means, you go ahead and do that, folks. I know it works for me, and I'm not saying that it'll work for you, but 70 boards, I've never had a problem. It should. So let's go ahead and mix this up, get this mixed up real good here. And we'll pour this in. And then we'll place our corks. And then we'll walk away for about 24 hours. We'll come back when they're full, when they're cured, and we'll be ready to pour our clear stage. The cool thing about the clear stage is it gives off a lot of depth. You get to see, we'll get to see a lot of this wood, like this, the live edge on this wood and stuff. And you'll be able, the, the most important thing is you get to see these corks. So another thing that's always important to to take into consideration, folks, is your, your thickest cork. You wanna make sure your corks are smaller in, in length and height to your wood. See, we've got some room here. And even if it was to raise a little bit, it uh, we still have a little bit of room to play with. See that? You never want your corks to be higher than your wood or else it's not gonna look good and you're gonna, you're gonna clean off uh, the edge here when you're sanding or whatever. So it's always a good idea to make sure that your corks are under your wood and that are lower in depth than your pieces of wood. It's always good to mix your tabletop epoxy at least two minutes, if not more. I always say a good two minutes just to, to ensure that you've got it all gelled up and all of these two components are working together to get a good, smooth, clean, crisp coat. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. That's good. Now what we want to do is we just want to put, like I said, a small layer on the bottom here, just enough to hold these suckers in place. Now I've seen a lot of other people, they'll pour this clear, they'll pour this, uh, the first coat, and then what they'll do is they'll put like super glue or something on their cork and stick it like that. If you wanna do it like that, that's fine too. Whatever works for you. But let's go ahead and get this baby poured and let's get these corks placed. This is gonna self level. So we don't need to worry too much about anything. We just want to get it coated and poured out and let this epoxy do its thing. Let's get it all self-leveled out there. Watch the water fall off the edge. That's the fun part about pouring. Typically, this is going to cure in about 16 hours, but it's still going to be a little tacky, so you don't want to touch it till about 24 hours. That's good. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and get a little bit more here off this edge. Okay. There we go. And now what we can do is So we're just going to get our torch. Just, just torch some of these bones out of here. Put those out of the way. Not bothering anybody. Let the torch start. Okay. 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 Got that done. And now's the fun part, folks. We're going to place these on top of this epoxy. And we're going to just let them do their thing. Now you can get corks, you can get corks like off of eBay, you can get them off Amazon, um, or you can get them off your own private collections, up to you. If you save corks, might as well do something with them. Enjoy the memories for all the, 
the poor soldiers that have have served you in the course of drinking wine. Let's put a couple more in there. And another thing I don't like to really get too close to the edge, just in case you have to cut out a piece like that. You don't want to, you don't want to have, you don't want your, your wine cork pushed up against the edge like that. Cause you may have to cut off this edge like that just to make, clean it up in the end process. So I always keep it just a little bit of ways away from there, just to make sure. Okay, folks, we have our corks in place. What we're going to do is we're going to let this cure and then we'll come back tomorrow in 24 hours and we'll pour our clear coat. We'll wait for that, okay? Okay, folks, it's been 24 hours and we're back. So all we're gonna do today is we're gonna raise up this deep pour epoxy. We're gonna pour it in and raise it up to about even and level with this, just to make sure that we get the clear coat of epoxy above our corks. That way when we're able to, when we're ready to cut this all out and plane it and get it flat, the corks won't be above the wood or the epoxy and they'll be perfectly level and clean. And let's get after it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some deep pour. And we're gonna pour in about, I'm gonna say 40 ounces in here. Just to make sure that we get up higher than where we need to be. So I'm gonna go with the four and we're gonna go, actually we're gonna go, let's go with the three. Let's give it 32, that way we save a little bit in case we need to. So let's do this. Actually, let's go to two. Two to one ratio. We're gonna go to the line two. There we go, a deep pour part A. Now we're gonna get our deep pour part B, which is the hardener. Pull that to two. There we go. Perfect. Now we're going to get our mixer. And we're going to mix this on up. It's always good to mix it for at least one to two minutes. But when you're mixing with the drill, it really covers a lot and it gets that part A and part B combined pretty quick. But it's also a good idea sometimes to, to if you don't want as many bubbles, to just mix it a little slower. The way I look at it is, outside epoxy deep pour is really good about self, uh, getting rid of these bubbles. So, I mean, you got to figure, folks, you're dealing with 10 to 12 hours of sitting in the container or the form. These bubbles are going to come out by themselves pretty easily. Where you get into a problem is when you have a uh, little porous wood that has a lot of air in it. That way, you know, what will happen is it'll, it'll force air out of there and give you bubbles. But those always go up to the surface. So when you clean this board up after it's fully cured after 72 hours, you can uh, sand those or plane those bubbles on the surface right off. Cool. So there we go. That's perfect. Let me go ahead and get my little... Uh-oh. Okay, here we go. We got that done. Now let's pour. And we're just going to pour this in real slow, nice and slowly. Like I said, there's going to be bubbles in here, but they're going to dissipate after a while because that's a lot of time for the, all that air to escape. I'm glad we poured to the level that we needed to. This one got a little submerged, but that's okay because we're good there. We'll fix that with the planer. All right, let's go ahead, turn on our torch, get these surface bubbles off for now. Alrighty, got that done. 
And now we will let this sit for 72 hours and let it cure. Then we'll come back, we'll pop it out of the mold, and we'll take it outside and get it all planed up. Let's get a head and a demold. So I'm just gonna pop out these two screws here. kind of straight edge or something that you can stick in there it should pop it right out of the mold <sighs> love that sound it's almost better though when you have uh, when you have it in a wood form it sounds a little cooler to be honest with you all right so look it's all out of the mold the underside we'll go ahead and sand this out but there was a couple of little all right folks before i run this through the planer i always like to cut off these edges that way we're dealing with a nice square piece we don't have any issues with the planer nothing like that so let's get after it So the cool thing about doing that is it cleans up your edges here. Cleans up the edges on your wood so you don't have any excess epoxy on it. Let's see. So it's nice and cleaned on those sides there. So now it's time to run this baby through the planer. How cool and quick was that, folks? Look how this came out. Those bubbles are totally gone. This is why we tell you folks, look at how the corks, <laughs> they evened out. Well, we're gonna go ahead and seal them in, so not to worry. That's why we tell you, like we said earlier, never run your corks too high. You don't want them to come over your wood because then you're gonna end up having to sand on them. And that's not good because then they're gonna look like that. And you don't want that, that is not cool. That's cool for the bottom because that's what it's gonna be used for. But imagine if that was on the top like this and you'd have like the, the cork protruding like that. So not cool. Okay, let's get this all sanded up and get it one step closer to finishing. Okay, folks, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna give this a nice little beveled edge along these edges. Now you can see here that the uh, planer kind of chipped these edges here. Not a problem. We're going to take care of that with a nice beveled. I'm going to go ahead and go with a chamfer, uh, a nice deep chamfer along this whole edge like this. And then I'm going to hit it uh, on here on the corners and it's going to look really cool. Let's check it out. Okay, folks, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to carve up these little bevels I told you for rails so that they can uh, so whoever's gonna use this can be able to pick it up um, with ease there'll be a nice little 
bevel indentation in there and they can go ahead and it'll come like this so they can just go ahead and get it from the underside. So what we did is we found the middle, measured out a straight line there. We went up uh, three inches on this side, three inches on that side because this piece is nine. So we're gonna come from this part to this part, this part to this part. Let's get after it. underneath and all they got to do is just go like this pick it up with ease let's take it in and let's get it its flood coat okay folks we're back we're gonna flood coat this baby and we're gonna use of course upstart epoxies tabletop epoxy so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do we're gonna pour about 16 ounces on this for a good first time flood uh, so let's go ahead and do, I like to always pour the hardener first. I don't know, for whatever reason, it just seems like it mixes so much better when I pour the, the hardener first. Because the hardener itself is a lot, um, has a lot more viscosity than the uh, epoxy for tabletop epoxy. It's just a lot uh, thicker and you'll see there, it's a little more like the molasses. Um, but we always heat our epoxy up first, just to get it nice and full of lovely viscosity. So let's go ahead and mix this up here. I like to mix by hand, especially when I'm doing a dual stage pour like this. Um, there's less bubbles and it just comes out a lot better. If you're mixing with a drill, when you're gonna be doing a seal, or a seal coat or a flood coat like this, um, it's, you trap, you, 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 you encase more bubbles in the epoxy and with tabletop, it cures a lot faster than like deep pour. So you don't necessarily have that time uh, for the bubbles to pop because this will start curing like in six hours, four to six hours, it starts getting uh, a little, a little uh, solidified a lot faster than like deep pour. So you don't have the opportunity to get rid of the bubbles like you do with deep pour with tabletop epoxy, which is what we're using right now to go ahead and pour on this self single serve charcuterie board. All you wine connoisseurs out there that just like to sit down with a nice glass of Chardonnay or Melbach or Tempranillo, whatever is your, tickles your fancy, and maybe have some cheese and crackers, this is just for you. Read a good book, watch a good, binge a good show. This is perfect for you. Okay, so I always like to mix this pot epoxy up tabletop epoxy for at least two minutes. And you don't gotta go full speed, 100 miles an hour. Just mix it up, get that cloudiness out of it. And once you see that the cloudiness is out of it, keep on mixing for at least another good 30 to 45 seconds, just to ensure that part A and part B are gonna play well together. Always make sure and get your sides real good and scrape the bottoms really good as well. Go ahead and pour right in the middle and let this baby just spread out on its own. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pat this. I'm not even going to use a spreader, a plastic spreader. I'm just going to go ahead and pat these sides, these corners. That way, the epoxy has spread out to these areas. And then I'm gonna use this excess epoxy on my gloves right there, you see that? I'm gonna use those to come across this, these sides here. That way it seals it perfect. You always wanna make sure that you cover your side areas first. And in this case, we gotta make sure that we get our handles good. I wanna make sure that epoxy hits our handles, that way they're coated and they're looking sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and just chop it a little bit, get some of those excess bubbles out. And then I'm gonna come back again and come across these sides. 
always want to make sure these sides are taken care of, folks. Because it ensures a perfect flow and a good overflow on your epoxy. You don't want too much. You don't want to waste. I mean, if you have to, you can scrape some. Uh, if, you, if you pour it a little less than what you should have, you can always scrape some from what's flowed down, what's dripped down, and pop it back in and redistribute it like that. Never hurt anybody. Just make sure your air is very debris free. Okay. There we go. So we've got that done. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these gloves off. Go ahead and get my, I'm gonna use the heat gun for this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a low setting because I don't wanna disrupt too much of the debris in the room or around the table where I pour. And I'm just gonna come like this. Get all these uh, top bubbles out there. Surface bubbles, I guess you could say. I'm gonna jump it up just a tad in certain areas. And all you really gotta worry about is this top side. You don't really gotta worry about your sides, folks, because the epoxy is constantly moving and there's not gonna be any bubbles on your side at all. So there we go. We have it like that. We'll go ahead and check back on this in about an hour, see where it's at. Hit it with the flood, or hit it with the heat gun again. Sand the bottom to about 220 grit. Give it an oil surface. Put some um, some feet on there, and we're good to go. We'll see you tomorrow. A lot of times, folks, what you can do is you can put a cover over your flood coat so you don't get any various debris or any air or any dust particles uh, or bugs, flies, whatever, on your product here. I like to do that, but you know what? By the same token, I like to keep the room undisturbed. I'll come in here every 45 minutes and I'll look at it from a distance just to make sure that you don't get any of the, that debris on there. You can also come and stand back and look at it like from an angle. That way you see the glare and you see that there's nothing in your flood coat. If you see that, that's a good check. You don't wanna disturb the room very much. You don't want your kids running in here. You don't want your dogs running in here, your cats, because they scoop up dander and debris around and you don't want that on your flood coat. So you can either cover it or just check it out every few minutes, folks, and make sure that everything's good. Because when you do cover it, sometimes you trap debris in the cover. You may not see it automatically, but when you go to take that cover off tomorrow, the debris that you trapped in there is gonna show up on your flood coat. So that's why I kind of like to err on the side of caution and just monitor my project instead of just covering it and walking away and depending on the cover to do the work. Nah, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with it and make sure that no debris gets on this so that when I come back in the morning, it's gonna be debris free and we're ready to finish this and not have to pour another coat. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, folks, everything turned out perfect with this flood coat. Not a single indentation, no bugs, no nothing, no debris. Perfect and flawless, and we didn't even cover it. So what we're gonna do today is we gotta get these edges off here, these little bubbles, and then we're gonna start off with 80 grit. Then we're gonna work our way up to 150 grit, and we're gonna finish with 240 grit so that the bottom is nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and get our 80 grit on there, and you're gonna see that this 80 grit really makes short work of these bubbles especially when you put your sander, if you have one of these sanders in turbo mode, it just goes to town, watch. Folks, turbo mode proved to be a little too much for this guy, so we had to switch it to standard mode midway, and it did flawless. So let's go ahead, pop on our 150. Pop on this 240 
and that will be a win. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take her inside. We're going to put some oil on the bottom here. We'll put some feet on here. And this piece will be done. Okay, folks, we're back. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on, we're just going to put on some stick-on rubber feet. And we're going to try and get them as close to the edge as we can here. Now you can also use these screw-on feet as, if you want. I mean, you can get these off Amazon. You can get them off the internet. You can even get them at your local um, hardware store. But for this purpose, we're just gonna use these ones because the customer didn't want any screw on legs. They wanted to be able to either lay this flat or take these off. So we're just gonna send them with something temporary and let them decide what they want to use. So we have these in the corner here and these are really good. They have a really super, super sticky adhesive that you don't gotta worry about. Let me go ahead and pop this glove on. A little bit of water soil goes a long way, folks them in there that's probably all we're gonna need for this so we're just gonna work that into the wood and the epoxy it'll never really soak into the epoxy but it'll keep it shiny for the underside okay there we go we've got this going here we're gonna go ahead and get this little corner here get all of this soaked up soil that way we cure this bottom side we also always want to remind you folks whenever you're making a charcuterie board and stuff like this if you're making them for yourself or for family or friends or if you're making them for a customer always remember that these are hand wash only you never want to throw these in your dishwasher because you can really mess up the epoxy it can take off the sheen it can uh it can take off these little feet you just it's always best just to hand wash your stuff Let's get around this corner here. Oh, there we go, folks. We'll go ahead. We'll let this dry. For about, I like to let it dry for a good 12 hours. Then I like to come back and wipe off whatever's left. And that's it. She's ready to rock and roll. If you haven't already, make sure and subscribe, folks, and hit that notification bell. That way you are alerted to when we put out banging new videos like this one. If you haven't, please make sure and like the video as well. And if you have any questions or comments, always leave them down below in the comment section. We respond to every comment, or we try to. Once again, this has been Steve with Upstart Epoxy, and we'll see you next time.